guys so the first video is uploaded if you're listening to this video the first part should be uploaded I did say today that I wanted to push for like an hour for Bible study well it'd be like an hour and maybe a minute or two but um if you go back on the first part of the video um the video for this morning the video before this we read Isaiah 33 through Isaiah 37 verses 1 through 20 and now we're going to continue on um, that center guy, center cherubs fall. And we'll just continue on until it's 3149. So then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent a message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Because you have prayed to me concerning Sinai Sherab, king of Assyria, this is the word the Lord has spoken against him. And then you have to remember, going back um, to 30, we're still in 37, but going up some verses, where the Lord told him, the Lord told him through eyes through the prophet Isaiah of the deliverance and what he was going to do with that that king, right? So, spoken against him. So the virgin daughter of Zion despises and mocks you. The daughter of Jerusalem tosses her head as you flee. Who is it you have insulted and blasphemed? Against whom have you raised your voice and lifted your eyes in pride? against the Holy One of Israel. By your messengers you have heaped insults on the Lord. And you have said, <coughs> excuse me guys, and where that came from, I just drank some water. And you have said, with, with my many chariots, I have ascended the heights of the mountains, the utmost heights of Lebanon. I have cut down its tallest cedars, the choices of its pines. I have reached its remotest heights. The, fine, the finest of its forests. I have dug wells in foreign lands. Right? And this is what it's talking about in the footnotes. And drunk the water there. With the soles of my feet, I have dried up all the streams of Egypt. Have you not heard? Remember, we just were talking about this in the, in the, in the, um, the prior video before this. Right? Have you not heard? Long ago, I ordained it. See, God is in control. Remember, the heart of the king is in the hand of God. In days of old, I planned it. Now I have brought it to pass that you have turned four to five cities. God is like, you think you're doing something. I'm the one really in control, right? To turn four to five cities into piles of stone. Their people drink of power, are dismayed and put to shame. They are like plants in the field. <clears throat> Excuse me. They are like plants in the field, like tender green shoots, like grass sprouting on the roof, scorched before it grows up. Okay, but I know where you stay and when you come and go and how you rage against me. That's just like Ecclesiastes talks about. God is looking on the just and the unjust. He reigns on the just and the unjust. And it's a time and season for everything, right? Because you rage against me and because your insolence has reached my ears, I will put my hook in your nose and my bed in your mouth and I will make you return by the way you came. See, God is like, I'm not finna play with you. No way you think you can touch an anointed of God and God not put his hand on you and deal with you, right? So somebody need to be encouraged by that. This is a situation where you don't have to, only thing you have to do is do what God is telling you to do. That's your strategy and you watch him work. So this will be the sign for you, O Hezekiah. This year you will eat what grows by itself, and the second year what springs from that. But in the third year, sow and reap, plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Once more a remnant, because remember we're talking about the remnant this morning, right? Once more a remnant of the house of Judah will take root below and bear fruit above. For out of Jerusalem will come a remnant, and out of Mount Zion a band of survivors. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. That's time back to Zechariah chapter 4, right? Therefore, this is what the Lord says concerning the king of Assyria. He will not enter this city or shoot an arrow here. He will not come before it with a sh with shield or build a siege rump against it. By the way that he came, he will return. He will not enter this city, declares the Lord. I will defend this city and save it for my sake and for the sake of David, my servant. So then the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, and these are like those combat angels, like we read about them when we did our Genesis series on Sodom and Gomorrah, 
We read about them when God was guiding um, the Israelites in Exodus, right? We read about them with the plagues. We read about them in Psalms 91. So many, when we did our Daniel series, when God released um, the angel to tell him from the day that you heart, you set your heart to find out the matter I was released, but the Prince of Persia was holding me up those demonic principalities that we've been talking about in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, right? So God did it. When you work the strategy that God gives you and you do what you need to do on your end, God is big enough and God enough and bold enough to do it on his end because he released an angel and put the death. 185,000 men in the Syrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, there were all the dead bodies. So the sinner, sinner Shereb, I think I'm getting better with his name, guys, because I'm not just calling him sinner no more. King of Assyria broke camp and withdrew. And, and what else is he expected to do? Your whole team is, is gone. Right? So he returned to Nineveh and stayed there. One day while he was worshipping in the temple of his god, Nisroch, his sons Add Ramal okay now the sun is gonna him and Sherezer cut him down with the sword and they escaped to the land of Ararat and Esser Hadan his son succeeded him as king. So not only did God deliver his word, but it was more than enough. He he killed his whole army and he dealt with them even though he fled away, he allowed his own sons to cut him down. And, and that wasn't unfamiliar back in those days, especially like, we don't have the time to get into that. So let's get into Isaiah 38. We're going to talk about right now Hezekiah's illness. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah son of Amos went to him and said, this is what the Lord says. Put your house, and you guys always hear me reference this, this is where it's coming from. Put your house in order because you are going to die, you will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. You guys always hear me reference this. And prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Go and tell Hezekiah, this is what the Lord, the God of your father, David, says. I've heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life. And I'll deliver you the you in this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city. You guys remember, I told you guys 2009 I had got saved, but then I went into a really back, backslidden mode. So it's like really 2010 I got saved. And it's like the situation, I, I gave you guys this testimony before in a couple of videos prior. The situation that had woke me up to get saved and really want to change my life and turn from the life I was living was like God gave me this Hezekiah turned his the, the, the report was given what was going to happen to him but Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and God heard his prayer so this part is very personal to me because when I first was starting out in the midst of what I was going through God had gave me this and it literally changed my life the power of crying out to God the power of being really right before God the power of praying to God the power of just really just giving it to him can work a wonder for you so so I will defend this city so this is the Lord's sign to you that the Lord will do what he has promised I will make the shadow cast by the sun go back the ten steps he has gone down on the stairway of Ahaz so the sunlight went back the ten steps it had gone down a writing of Hezekiah king of Judah after his illness and recovery I said in the prime of my life must I go through the gates of death or hell or Sheol in the Hebrew Sheol and be robbed of the rest of my years. Well not you know. So let me keep going. I said I will not again see the Lord. The Lord in the land of the living. No longer will I look on mankind. Or be with those who now dwell in this world. Or this place of cessation in the footnotes. Right. So <clears throat> like a shepherd's tent. My house has been pulled down and taken from me. Like a weaver I have rolled up my life. And he has cut me off from the loom. Day and night you made an end of me. I waited patiently till dawn. This is kind of reminding me of some of the Psalms, right? This is how some of the Psalms are. So, I waited patiently till dawn, but like a lion, he broke all my bones. Day and night, you made an end of me. I cried like a swift or a thrush. I moaned like a morning dove. My eyes grew, this is of the writing of Hezekiah, right? My eyes grew weak as I looked to the heavens. Let me sit back some because I'm going to be comfortable. So, 
I am troubled, O Lord. Come to my aid. But what can I say? He has spoken to me, and he himself has done this. I will walk humbly all my years because of this anguish of my soul. Lord, by such things men live, and my spirit finds life in them too. You restored me to health and let me live. Surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. In your love you kept me from the pit of destruction. You have put all my sins behind your back. For the grave or shield cannot praise you. Death cannot sing your praise. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. The living, the living, they praise you as I'm doing today. Fathers, tell your, their children about your faithfulness. The Lord will save me and we will sing with screen instruments all the days of our lives in the temple of the Lord. <clears throat> Isaiah has said, prepare a, prepare what? a poultice of figs and apply it to the bull and he will recover. Hezekiah had asked, what will be the sign that I will go up to the temple of the Lord? Right, and we just read about that in 38. So now we're going to get into 39, which is envoys from... Um, from Babylon. So at that time, okay, let's let's try it with this one. Merodach Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon. I need some more water. Hold on one second, guys. Okay, guys, I got me some more water. I'm about to after I do the Bible study with you guys, I'm gonna go get me some breakfast and come back, and I'll get on the road maybe in like a couple hours afterward because I got, still got some things I gotta do at the house too. But I think I'm going to go get me some breakfast and um, come back. Y'all already know what I want to get. My burrito from Burger King. So, okay, so let's go back. So, so this man's son of Baladon, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters in the gift because he had heard of his illness and recovery. Hezekiah received the envoys gladly and showed them, listen to this. Pay attention to this because you see what he just came out of, but you see these envoys is coming from another land. So just pay attention to this. Hezekiah received the envoys gladly and showed them what was in his storehouses, the silver, the gold, the spices, the fine oil, his entire armor, and everything found among his treasures. There was nothing in his palace. Pay attention to what we're reading, right? There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Verse 3, then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah asked, what did these, those men say and where did they come from? See, because God didn't send these people. From a distant land, Hezekiah replied, they came to me from Babylon. Remember guys, when we read, we didn't read all of Joshua together, but we read some of Joshua together. I was telling you guys last year, I read Joshua and those people that came and they were deceptive to him. And I think they were like woodcutters and they had to get the water, but they couldn't go against them and defeat them because they had made a, they had sworn a covenant before the Lord with them. So it's like that. He didn't, they didn't seek God about who these people is. See, his discernment wasn't up and they coming at a time where he was vulnerable, but now he's getting better. So they sending these gifts and these letters and, you know, dressing it up, making it seem like it's one way, but there are terror motives and there are plots and plans is not what it's looking like and this is a word for somebody you have to have discernment and you have to make sure you have clearance on god about that person or that particular thing or that season or that project or that assignment because everything and every assignment and every place and everyone is not what they seem to be right there's this quote you guys know i love quotes but there's this quote that says Basically, like, you can't trust everything. Like, you basically can't take everything for what it looks like at face value. Because even salt looks like sugar. And what's going to be the difference? The, you got to taste it to see. It doesn't say all of that, but it says, basically, like, that's what it's talking about. So, let's keep reading, guys. So, from a distant land, Hezekiah replied, they came to me from Babylon. The prophet asked, what did they see in your palace? They saw everything in my palace, Hezekiah said. There is nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. See, everyone, and we, I don't know if I'm going to do a video on that. The treasure box. I'm going to make a note. We're going to do a video on the treasure box. That everybody is not entitled to the treasures in your life. Let me pause this video so I can write that down so I don't forget. Hold on, guys. It's black. I just don't want it to pause out. Give me one second.
Okay, God, excuse me about that. So the help of Israel. Be silent before me, you islands. Let the nations renew their strength. Let them come forward and speak. Let us meet together at the place of judgment. Who has stirred up one from the east, calling him in righteousness to his service? Or in the footnotes it says, whom victory meets at every step. He hands nations over to him and subdues kings before him. He turns them to dust. dust ugh, what was dust? Turns them to dust with his sword, to wind-blown chaff with his bow. He pursues them and moves on unscathed by a path his feet have not traveled before. Who has done this and carried it through? Calling forth the generations from the beginning. I, the Lord, with the first of them and with the last, I am he. The islands have seen it in fear. The ends of the earth tremble. They approach and come forward. Each helps the other and says to his brother, be strong. The craftsman encourages the goldsmith, and he who smooths with the hammer spurs on him who strikes the anvil. He says of the wielding, it is good. He nails down the idol so it will not topple. But you, O Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its father's corners, I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So many promises and blessings in what we're reading, right? All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear. I will help you. Do not be afraid, O warm Jacob, O little Israel, for I myself will help you, declares the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. See, I will make you into a threshing sledge, new and sharp with many teeth. You will thresh the mountains and crush them and reduce the hills to chaff. You will winnow them, the wind will pick them up, and the gale will blow them away. But you will rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. The poor and needy search for water, but there is none. Their tongues are parched with thirst, but I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will make rivers flow on barren heights and springs within the valleys. I will turn the desert into pools of water and the parched ground into springs. I will put in the desert the cedar and the acacia, the myrtle and the olive. I will set pines in the wasteland, the fir and the cypress together, so that people may see and know, may consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this, that the Holy One of Israel has created it. Present your case, says the Lord. Set forth your argument, says Jacob's king. Bring in your idols to tell us what is going to happen. Tell us what the former things were so that we may consider them and know their final outcome. Or declare to us the things to come. Tell us what the future holds so we may know that you are God's, right, little G. Do something whether good or bad so that we will be dismayed and filled with fear. But you are less than nothing and your works are utterly worthless. He who chooses you is detestable. I've stirred up one from the north, and he comes, one from the rising sun who calls on my name. He treads on rulers as if they were mortar, as if he were a potter treading the clay. Who told of this from the beginning so we could know, or beforehand so we could say he was right? No one told of this. No one foretold it. No one heard any words from you. I was the first to tell Zion, look, here they are. I gave to Jerusalem a messenger of good tidings. I look, but there is no one, no one among them to give counsel, no one to give answer when I ask them. See, they are all false. Their deeds amount to nothing. Their images are but wind in confusion. And guys, we're going to close. We're going to read Isaiah 42 and 43. We're going to close with those two today. Um, cause then 43 will be that we read. So we, today we read from Isaiah 33 to Isaiah 43. So the, we're talking about now 42, the servant of the Lord and, um, song of praise to the Lord in Israel, blind and deaf. So here is my servant. I don't let me put my, my, what you call it down. Here is my servant whom I uphold my chosen one in whom I delight. I'll put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. 
he will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his law the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says. He who created the heavens and scratched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives birth to his people and life to those who walk on it. Hold on one second, guys. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. To open eyes, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, that are blind. To free captives from prison and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place and new things, I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it. You islands and all who live in them. Let the desert and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kedar lives rejoice. Let the people of Selah sing for joy. This cover. Hold on. Okay. Let them shout from the mountaintops. Let them give glory to the Lord and proclaim his praise in the islands. The Lord will march out like a mighty man, like a warrior he will stir up his ill. With a shout he will raise the battle cry and will triumph over his enemies. For a long time I kept silent, I've kept silent. I've been quiet and held myself back. But now like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp and pant. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. Because see, this is even time back into there's a time and season for everything. I will turn rivers into islands and dry out the pools. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. But those who trust the idols who say to images, you are our gods, will be turned back in utter shame. Hear you deaf, look you blind and see. Who is blind but my servant and deaf like the messenger I send? Who is blind like the one committed to me, blind like the servant of the Lord? You have seen many things, but have paid no attention. Your ears are open, but you hear nothing. It pleased the Lord for the sake of his righteousness to make his law great and glorious. But this is a people plundered and looted, all of them trapped in pits or hidden away in prisons. They have become plundered with no one to rescue them. They have been made loot with no one to say, send them back. Which of you will listen to this or pay close attention in time to come? Who handed Jacob over to become loot in Israel to the plunderers? Was it not the Lord against whom we have sinned? For they would not follow his ways. They did not obey his law. So he poured out on them his burning anger, the violence of war. It enveloped them in flames, yet they did not understand. It consumed them, but they did not take it to heart. And in Isaiah 43, which we're going to close with today, we're talking about Israel's only Savior, God's mercy and Israel's unfaithfulness. Excuse me, and that's it. So, but now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I've summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give men in exchange for you, and people in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Lead out those who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf. All the nations gather together and the peoples assemble. Which of them foretold this and proclaimed to us the former things? Let them bring in their witnesses to prove they were right, so that others may hear and say it is true. 
You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God, see the little G, was formed, nor will there be nor will there be one after me. I even I am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed. I am not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am he. Look, yes, and from ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand when I act who can reverse it. That's just like kind of tying back into um, Revelation. When we read Revelation, when he shuts the door, it's shut. When he opens the door, it's open, right? So we're going to close with God's mercy and Israel's unfaithfulness. This is what, okay, there we go. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians or Chaldeans in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord your Holy One, Israel's creator, your king. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. So I said new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert and screams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me. The jackals and the owls because I provide water in the desert and screams in the wasteland. To give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Yet you have not called upon me, O Jacob. You have not wearied yourselves for me, O Israel. You have not brought me sheep for burnt offerings, nor honored me with your sacrifices. I have not burdened you with grain offerings, nor wearied you with demands for incense. You have not bought any fragrant calamus for me, or lavished on me the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your offenses. See the sins and the fences. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. It remembers your sins no more. Even I believe it's in Psalm that says, As far as the east is from the west, has so far has God removed your sins from you. Right? He do not remember them anymore. So let's do 26 to 28. Review the past for me. Let us argue the matter together. State the case for your innocence. Your first father sinned. Your spokesman rebelled against me. So I will disgrace the dignitaries of your temple. And I will consign Jacob to destruction and Israel to scorn. And then um, this is what it's talking about in the footnotes. The consign. And guys, we're going to close with this. We have a few minutes left, but I don't want to begin reading 44, and we only have a few minutes left. We may not, because it's 44, it's kind of lengthy, so we'll just pick it up. When you see Bible study for Isaiah, we'll just pick that up in the next one. And thanks for joining. You guys have a great day.